Man, oh man. People are probably asking me why I'm wearing glasses in this video. I've just been sick for over a week now and my eyes are looking really... Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are talking about camera gear for traveling. I've been getting a lot of requests on Facebook and Instagram. People asking me what type of camera I use, what type of camera I use when you go into the pool or ocean, what type of drone I use, all these kinds of questions regarding videography. Whether it's overseas or local, the same gear applies. The type of gear you require when going on these trips so that you can capture all of your favorite moments. So today I'm breaking down into three topics. Firstly, let's look at camera gear. What's the difference between the DSLR camera and a mirrorless camera? This is a Nikon DSLR. As you can see, it's quite big. It does a really good job when it comes to photography. However, I don't find it that good for video. Whereas when it comes to my video, I normally shoot this on my Canon M50. It's always kind of big and bulky, which is not really suitable for carrying around especially when traveling so what's the main difference between a DSLR and a mirrorless camera well a DSLR contains a mirror when light enters through the lens this passes through this kind of mirror that then transfers it into a prism of mirrors and when you hit your shutter button this then flips or turns the mirror which allows you to capture this light into the image sensor which then gives you your picture with the mirrorless camera, light passes through the lens which goes into an electronic image sensor and this allows you to view it on your electronic viewfinder or optical viewfinder. The other thing about mirrorless is that they are cost effective which also gives you this big price gap when it comes to functionality. Now there are also some mirrorless cameras out there that are really expensive but this depends on your goal you're trying to achieve with your videography or your cinematography. So I've been using the Canon M50 for some time now and what I really like about it is the dual pixel autofocus which I do not have on my DSLR. This has helped me with the fast tracking of any object in front of the lens. Always in focus. Another feature I really like is the image stabilization. The biggest problem today with videography is that people don't want to see your shaky footage. Especially with me, I have really shaky hands, so the image stabilization on this Canon mirrorless camera really plays a good feature. So, once you establish your budget, I would recommend going online, checking what the price of cameras are mirrorless or DSLR. I would prefer to go mirrorless because of videography which is so much better with the high functionality built in mirrorless cameras these days. From my perspective I would rate the Canon and the Sony cameras one of the best video cinematography cameras you can purchase today. But Canon their main focus was the DSLR and recently they've been bringing out mirrorless cameras and vlogging cameras which is really cheap to purchase. My Canon M50 goes around $600 which is about 8,000 rands here in South Africa whereas a Sony mirrorless camera starts easier from about $2,000. So there is a huge price difference. It's also because Sony has been in the mirrorless game for some time now and really has quite high functionality built into the mirrorless cameras. Next up we have the GoPro. This has been my go-to camera for some time now. The best thing about it, I mean, it's an action camera and it's meant to go anywhere. The brand GoPro has been the leading action camera for some time now. There are some other action cameras out there but still lacks the functionality when it comes to the GoPro. So what makes the GoPro such a powerful action camera? Well, firstly, 
it's damn tiny fully waterproof this is the gopro hero 5 which means that i don't need any special casing when it comes to going into the water the thing when it comes to action cameras is that there's obviously no depth of field because it needs to capture everything in your frame the only problem i have with gopro is the internal microphone which irritates me sometimes because a lot of handling noise happens especially when i'm moving with a type of tripod and walking around this can become a little bit of irritation there are so many accessories available out there for the gopros you have, you have a chest harness you have head harness you have accessories for all kinds of sports out there so it really makes a good action camera to have in your bag okay cell phones what makes cell phones so great these days well with the technology and the functionality that's been building over these years i'm a samsung person and i'm currently rolling the note 9 which has a really good camera and this allows me to shoot 4k with image stabilization which really makes it a good point and shoot camera to have quick access now let's talk about drones there are so many drones out there in the market right now and people are always asking me what type of drone do I go for? What brand do I look for? There are drones ranging from all different price ranges. So the best thing for you to do is obviously again look at the budget, look at the money that you want to spend on a drone before going and doing some shopping. And my favorite thing is drone photography something i really love using in my videography i often hear people complaining about their drones that's flying off on their own and crashing and there's no types of sensors and these kinds of things i always recommend to people do that start off with an entry level drone and the drone i have is a dji spark which is a really entry level uh, DJI drone for those that do not know DJI is one of the leading brands in drone technology and has been around for some time now and they've really perfected the high technology that goes into these drones however drones can really make your video look sweet I've been taking my DJI Spark around with me on many trips and I've crashed it many times however it still stands strong and this is because the build quality is really really good the other great thing about the DJI drones is that the software interaction with the controller is quite seamless and I never had any problems with the smartphone and the controller. So I strongly suggest that you look at a DJI brand and, and see what falls into your budget. I mean that you have the DJI Spark which is the entry level and then you get the Mavic A and the Mavic Pro 2 which is currently the new drone out as well as the Phantom 4 Pros which is really a cinematography drone used by professionals out there. I really recommend that you start off with the entry level get used to flying get used to crashing I mean this becomes a norm and any drone Droner, Droner, is, is there a word called Droner, Droner, a drone pilot, I would say, drone pilot, droney, droney pilot, drone pilot, but anyways, any drone pilot will tell you that they have crashed a drone once or twice, and if you have some cheap drone, don't expect it to survive a crash, it's so. The other thing with drones is that they offer really high image quality. The DJI Spark that I have shoots only up to 1080p. You do have other drones like the Mavic Pro and the Mavic Air and the Phantoms that offer up to 4K with 3 axis stabilization. The other thing with drones is that there are sometimes no fly zones in some countries. So please do your research before entering the country with your drone. Some of these countries can be really strict. They won't even allow you to take the drone through security. So just make sure you do your research with the DJI uh, with the DJI app sometimes when you in a no-fly zone area the app does not allow your drone to take off so this is a really good feature this is also to protect the airspace in which helicopters and planes use so please respect that other than that drones are great so get a drone you will enjoy it's still my favorite toy let's talk about audio now audio is the most critical thing when it comes to 
videography or cinematography. With the microphones, most of the cameras do come with a built-in microphone. However, DSLRs and mirrorless cameras, you're going to have this weird sound that's coming from the camera and we call this fiddly noise because every time you touch the camera or you flip the screen, you will hear this noise in your videos. And to fix this problem, there's only one solution, that's an external microphone. So currently I'm using a Video Mic Pro which is a really good quality microphone. The microphone which costs around 300 to 350 US dollars and about 4,000 to 5,000 rands here in South Africa. So it's a really expensive microphone but really delivers that crisp quality that you need. There are other microphones out there like Sennheiser which are also really good microphones but then the microphone prices really rise as the quality gets really high. Another nice tool to use is an audio recorder. This is the, I think, this is a Zoom H1N, which is a really entry level audio recorder, but does the job. So, really makes it a nice compact audio recorder to keep. The only problem with this is that you'll have to sync your sound with your video because this is a separate audio recording device. Your audio will need to be added on top of your video timeline. So, really nice device to have, especially when you recording sound effects this is really cool and last but not least is lighting 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 light we all know that light can become a problem especially in dark areas you need lenses that can cater for low light and there are a lot of ways to fix this issue by using external lighting like this big light I have on my rig or by using a lens that really handles low light that well. The problem with using higher ISO level is that the higher you go, the more noise you get in your frame. So it's not the typical fix, but sometimes it's the only choice you have. I recommend when traveling, try and shoot most of your video during the day. This will help with the natural light that you can use. When shooting at night, just make sure you have an external light source that you can use in your video. So travel videos should be fun and most importantly, you having fun and making memories. You'll just have to get used to whooping out the camera here and there. So it's really not a big problem in public, but sometimes people are shy. You'll just have to get used to it. So what are you waiting for? Get out there, buy your camera and go shoot something. I mean, take a picture or make a video. Whew. I hate getting the flu and also this light is giving me a headache if you found this video interesting hit that like button and do not forget to subscribe i'll be bringing more content on a regular basis i've been away for some time now that's because i still work so i'm trying to balance this work vlog kind of situation i have right now okay cool